Back in the action once again. It's about that time of day again here, folks. Time to get back to work. It's Monday evening. It is October the 21st, 2019. My name is Joseph, and as always, welcome back to your nightly newsletter. Now, in case you're here for the first time, don't forget I help traders find high-quality trade setups using a very simple three-step trading strategy that we teach and trade together every morning in our trade room. But my job's a little bit different tonight. My job tonight is to help you guys identify the best levels of support and resistance for tomorrow, the best entry and exit points for tomorrow, and most importantly, can't forget about this, how to avoid the most common traps for tomorrow. That's going to be Tuesday's trading session. And we have quite a bit to cover in tonight's video. We'll first start off tonight by, by checking the calendar. Got a big, big week ahead of us. A lot of news back to back to back here this week. And I want to make sure you're ready for it so you know what to schedule your time for tomorrow morning. Then we'll open up some charts. We'll grab some oil, some S&P, got some NASDAQ, and I got that yellow metal all rolled up here tonight right on that gold futures. I'm going to jump here first, though, to oil. Crude oil is, well, they didn't really show us their cards until the end of the day today. Right? I had a pretty busy day on oil today. A little bit up, a little bit down, a little bit sideways. But how they finish today's trading session really tells us the whole entire story. And most importantly, it gives us a good plan for tomorrow's trading session. Let's grab that Texas T, that black gold, those crude oil futures, and let's get this newsletter going here tonight, shall we? Now, of course, like I said earlier, a little bit of everything here today in the crude oil right a little bit up a little bit down a little bit sideways but look where they finish up they finish up right back inside of what we have to assume is a trading range we're pretty much right smack in the middle that was kind of the giveaway to be honest with you right right smack in the middle of that daily trading range a little bit up a little bit down a little bit sideways and we finish right in the middle so anytime I see a market that kind of goes up goes down and finishes towards that halfway point I always know there's probably going to be a range on here somewhere and so what I'm trying to do now is is trying to reverse it near this now and figure okay where's my trading range and we did a pretty good job at finding that range here so this is going to be considered a range bound market overall right now what do we do with a with a with, with a uh, range bound market we buy low right we sell high uh-huh and we avoid the middle you don't say buy low sell high avoid the middle I want to get down to buy up I want to get up so I can sell back down but here's the rub here's the rub the overall bearish tone to it there definitely is some bearish momentum to it right now that tells me that being a buyer is going to be a little bit different than being a seller same goal buy low sell high but slightly different tactics so in tonight's video I'm gonna talk about my plan on buying underneath this low my plan on selling up above that high and of course anytime we have a range I got to talk about range breakouts, right? Not every breakout is going to be successful as we saw earlier on in today's session. So we'll talk about what a good breakout looks like, what a bad breakout looks like, when to buy low, when to sell high, and when to sit on hands. Got a lot to cover tonight on this oil, so make sure you stay tuned for more. Over on the S&P, the E-minis, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ are both very similar. They are very bullish, as you can see here. But you'll notice they're starting to get really tight right inside of this kind of wedge if you will right now wedges are very emotional markets anytime I see a wedge I always know there's there there's a specific personality to a wedge and usually what happens on wedges is once they start getting down to the nitty-gritty here we usually see a beautiful pullback right to give us a chance to buy nice and low so I know we're bullish I want to be a buyer and really at this point a lot of this has to do with uh, you know how deep is the pullback is it a relatively shallow pullback okay yeah, that'll be a, a nice easy pattern but what if it's a really deep deep pullback that pullback will be a little more difficult for us to get in on so I want to make sure I prep for multiple scenarios here in case it's a shallow pullback a deep pullback you know and sometimes these wedges sometimes they get a little bit 
chopped up here and goes sideways. So we'll definitely plan on, right, what if the market goes sideways here in the short term. I've got some resistance areas overhead, as you can see, okay, up there at 3014. So we'll also talk about what to look for if this market keeps trying to push higher. So up, down, and sideways. I'll even talk about how to qualify a reversal back down to those lows. Going to cover a lot tonight on this S&P. NASDAQ is very similar. NASDAQ's very similar. Got some overhead resistance. We're definitely bullish on the NASDAQ right now. There's no question about that as we look at this chart. So we're definitely bullish on the NASDAQ. Knowing this, though, right, knowing that we're bullish, we're also getting all coiled up here inside this little wedge, looking for that deep pullback. Now, is it a, is it a shallow pullback? Is it a really deep pullback? Those are, some scenario, those are some scenarios we're prepping for here tomorrow. Do we go sideways up here? You know, what do we do if it starts flattening out? And what if it keeps going higher? You know, we're going to plan all of those different types of scenarios here tonight. That way, you're ready to rock and roll no matter what we get for tomorrow on the NQ. And, of course, last but not least here over on the gold. Gold really is kind of the shining star here tonight on the video. Lots of great information on this chart. There are, boy, there's a lot on this chart, isn't there, right? There's a, there's a trading range. I think that's I think that's quite obvious, okay? That range, what does range tell me? Range tells me sell high, range tells me buy low. Absolutely I want to be a buyer as we go lower. What else do we have here? Big old channel. Okay? This is one of those channels that is so flat and so wide you know they're going to try to go back to the high of that channel. So that lends credibility to this move going back to the range. But then we got the one more clue here, and that is a spike into what I'm sure a lot of people are going to call a spike in channel. Spike in channel just might be the most important clue on this. What does a spike in channel tell me to do? It tells me to sell up inside the sell zone. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail here in the introduction, but I have reason to believe that that sell might just fail. And we might get a shot to sell, right, or buy into those seller failures. So I'm looking to be a buyer here right now on the gold. I've got a lot of clues telling me that it wouldn't be bad to be a buyer here, but there's one big problem, and that is that very strong move down into what I would imagine a lot of people here are going to call a spike in channel. So I'll talk about a really great plan tonight of how I can be a buyer on this, but I have to be aware I can't just buy it yet. We get a lot of potential for more sellers before we get back up into that range. We'll talk about the buy side. We'll talk about the sell side, okay, if it does keep going lower. And we'll also talk about, right, breakouts and these ranges as well. So a lot to cover here tonight on this gold. So looking to be a buyer here on the gold, waiting for a pullback on the NASDAQ and the S&P. And, of course, that oil showing its cars. Got a lot to talk about tonight on that oil. But you know me, though. Before we jump into that video tonight, before we cover all the details for tonight's newsletter, please don't forget to join our mailing list. All I need is your name, your email address. Hit that Subscribe Now button. Oh, and don't forget, when you hit that Subscribe Now button, your job ain't over yet. Your job's not over yet until you go into your inbox, check your email inbox for that welcome email. It's got a verification link in it. I need you to grab that welcome email, verify you got that verification link. That way I know I can keep safely sending you emails every evening when our nightly newsletter goes live. Remember, just before I publish this video on our YouTube channel every evening, I fire out an email to everybody on our mailing list. I wanna make sure you get that email. So give me your first name, your email address hit that subscribe now check your email inbox and don't forget sometimes that welcome email gets stuck in your spam filter so check that spam filter if you don't see it there and how about questions I know there's some folks here brand new here this evening right I know you might be here for the first time today if you're here for the first time today what questions can I help answer for you that's what the comment section below is for so maybe you want to know more about the trading strategy we're using the indicators we're using trend lines being drawn ranges whatever the case may be questions about anything discussed in this video tonight drop me those questions in the comment section below and I really look forward to helping you understand everything we're talking about here tonight also how about some feedback 
Any constructive criticism? What do you like most about this stuff? What do you hate most about it? If you could, if you ran the show here at corporate headquarters in Los Angeles, if you were in charge of this video newsletter, what would you do more of? What would you do less of? I want to hear. I want to hear from you. What do you love? What do you hate? What would you change? What would you never want to change here on this video newsletter? Drop those feedback comments in the comment section below. And guys, while you're down there dropping those questions and feedbacks in the comment section below, do me a huge favor, will you? Hit that thumbs up button for me here on the YouTube video. Because believe it or not, every time you hit that thumbs up button, YouTube rewards me by exposing this video to more traders who would love to learn this trading strategy. So guys, if you tune in every evening, if you love the nightly newsletter, help me expose this video to more people out there in YouTube land by writing some comments, right? Some questions in the comment section below and hit that thumbs up button, right? To show your support for this video newsletter. Oh, and don't forget, don't forget, maybe you've got a question you don't want to type into the chat, into the uh, comments section. You can always call me. You know, I'm always here. I'm always here. Call me anytime you have any questions. I've got a toll-free phone number in the upper right-hand corner. I've also got that live support tool up there if you have any questions along the way. And I realize, I realize that most websites are all call centers and auto robots and chat widgets, but I'm old school. You call that toll-free phone number, we're gonna pick up that phone call, answer all your questions. You know, for example, maybe you've got questions about the best brokers and the best data feeds right now, or maybe you wanna know more about how to get access to our trade room on a free pass, or maybe you wanna register for our free trading classes. Everybody loves those free classes. Feel free to call the toll-free phone number up there if you have any questions about anything along the way. But in the meantime, though, we gotta get to work, though, huh? You guys didn't come here to talk about thumbs up and right call us you guys came here for the good stuff let's jump into this video tonight let's start off tonight by looking at the calendar here this is the fourth week of october and believe it or not it's not the end of the month right one two three four yeah four weeks here so it's soon to be five weeks here in the month of october so this is this is this this month is definitely getting a little bit long in the tooth if you will but we got what we got a full week ahead of us now keep in mind Mind, guys and gals keep in mind this week we are right in the, the thick of earnings season what you want to remember is for the S&P and the Nasdaq before the market opens and after the market closes you're gonna see a quite a bit of volatility so be careful in the pre-market and the after hours right now especially on the Nasdaq got a lot of tech names coming out a lot of Nasdaq symbols coming out with their earnings this week if you want to get a full rundown on what the individual earnings are just go right to Google and just type in earnings season October 21st 2019 you'll see directly from the Nasdaq right you can get a list of all the earnings reports I wouldn't worry too much about the specific earnings right I'm a pattern trader I'm a technical trader so for me I'm looking for technical patterns I want momentum I want pattern I want signal right so I'm not gonna worry too much about after hours stuff but if you are trading after hours though before the open after the close be aware you're going to have some unexpected moves some volatility here as we've got earnings coming out this week and again if you want to kind of geek out on all the specific earnings coming out i'm not going to go into that detail right now but very easy to find on a google search right nasdaq earnings calendar and you can find it right there very very easy so we know that we've got we know we've got some earnings at the uh again before the open after the close so be careful outside of right be careful outside of normal market hours here and how about tomorrow tomorrow of course is tuesday it's october the 22nd we've got some home sales number at 10 o'clock eastern time that is a very very good thing to see because 10 o'clock has recently for the past few weeks has been a little bit of a uh, a very volatile time of the day so we are expecting to see if i had to guess tomorrow i would guess the best most reliable most dependable setups are probably going to happen but between that kind of 10 o'clock to 11.15 block tomorrow. I might be wrong, right? Please be, please be aware, this could easily change. But anytime I see a big number like this existing home sales number at 10 o'clock, I always know to really pay attention to and try to stay patient. 
You know, don't waste all your bullets, as we say, right? Don't don't waste all your ammunition before you get those good setups later in the session tomorrow. Now, don't forget, tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time, and every, and every day, Monday through Friday, we're going to open up our trade room, and we'll do all of this together. So we'll be hunting for setups together tomorrow with all of our clients in the trade room opening up at 8 o'clock. I would guess, though, that 10 o'clock news 10 o'clock to 11.15, that's what we're going to be looking for, those big home run setups here tomorrow in our trade room. Speaking of setups, let's get, let's get some charts going here. So we know about earnings here before and after. We know about the news tomorrow at 10 o'clock Eastern time. Let's get some charts up here, shall we? I get some oil. S&P, NASDAQ, gold. Let's jump into some black gold here first. The Texas T, we got the oil futures. Let's clean this stuff up a little bit here, make sure we know what we're looking at. Now, again, as I mentioned in the introduction, oil had a little bit of everything today, a little bit of bullishness, a little bit of bearishness, a little bit of bullishness, and they finish right smack in the middle. Now, with that overall finish in the middle, we can probably assume there's going to be some sort of range here, which means we have a balanced market. Now, is there any directional bias in this market right now? I would definitely say there is an overall bearish bias to it on the chart right now, which means I've got to be very, very careful being a buyer as the market pulls back. And there's a couple things I want to talk about tonight as far as buying on this pullback. You know, the, 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 the plan overall on oil is pretty darn simple. It's a range bound market. I want to buy low. I want to sell high. And really what it all comes down to is momentum. Momentum when it comes to a range is really the most important factor other than buying low and selling high. For example, you know, it would be very easy to get a pullback down to this rising support trend line, get a moving average coming over, and we could easily be a buyer into those stop losses, right? Sellers to sell off the moving average. We can be a buyer back into that trading range. However, though, if this market was to really run lower, yet yeah, now that bearish momentum is a lot more difficult to swallow now. And now what I want to wait for is, is a slight variation of that failure pattern called a nested failure. So a lot of this has to do with momentum. Now, remember, I've got this range. I'm going to use that range to find my buy zone. I'm going to use that range to find my sell zone, buy low, sell high, okay? Avoid the middle. Now, as I zoom in on this, as I zoom in on this, you can see I've drawn in this rising support trend line, okay? That's going to be our best friend here for a short-term buying opportunity as we go lower. What I'd like to do is, is get this market to try to run lower. It's a balanced market, which means it's gonna probably end up right back into that range. At that point, the moving average comes over. Now, I'm hoping we can get something like this where we can get those sellers to try to sell off the moving average and we can be a buyer right into those stop losses. Just like, see, just like I said before, we go down, the bears sort of sell off the moving average, okay? And we can buy into their stops. Same basic idea. So if we see a shallow pullback down into this rising support trend line, just simply look for those sellers coming in off the moving average. And the key here, guys and gals, will be getting in underneath that 45. That'll be your key there, getting in underneath that 45. That way you're not buying inside the range. Make sense? You want to be buying underneath the range so the range acts as a magnet. Now, one problem we have, though, is if it really tumbles. If it really tumbles, now again, we've got that overall bearishness, and now we've got to be a little more disciplined now. Now, as the market rolls lower here now, much stronger move down, we need to respect the bears now. They're going to probably try more than just once, right? They'll try once, they'll try twice, and then we can be a buyer going back up into that trading range. I hope that makes sense. If it's a relatively shallow pullback, I can be, again, because it's a range bound day, I want to buy low, I can be a buyer into the stop losses of those sellers on a relatively shallow pullback. But if this thing really pushes lower, now that momentum is simply too great for those bears, 
Again, it's overall bearish here, isn't it? So because of that, we've got to give those sellers the benefit of the doubt. Let them try once, let them try twice, and notice how I draw this. There's two tries, they're separate. The second one is higher than the first. Very, very important that the second try is higher than the first. Then we know where their stops are. Then we know where the pain starts, right? Now we know where the pain points are, and now we can go out and buy into those stop losses as we go back up into that trading range. Those are two scenarios to think about as we get that pullback. Now, what if we sit and run sideways? If we sit and run sideways, nothing changes. We're still waiting for that breakdown, waiting for that failure, and looking for that buy going back in. Or if it really breaks down, again, that momentum is too much, and so I wanna let the one, the two, and then back up from there. That's called a failure, or this, this, this one's called a nested failure. One's called a failure, the other's called a nested failure. We'll talk about ways to learn more on that in just a few moments. Now, what if we go higher here? It really has everything to do with how we get there, okay? For example, let's say that we go sideways here for a while. If we go sideways now, that pretty much balances that momentum out. If we go sideways, now what I can do is, I can wait for the market to go up, Remember, you don't want to buy in the middle of that range, okay? You want to sell high. So we know where our sell zones are. Wait for those buyers now to try to buy that pullback. Rookie traders love breakouts, and the other like you more, they like breakout pullbacks. I'm going to look for a breakout pullback pattern, and remember, it's a range market. Okay, the odds are much better we go back into that range again. It's not a trending market at this point. It's a range market. So knowing that, right, if I see those, if I see a breakout again after we go sideways, I now know buyers are going to probably try to buy that pullback. And when they do, I know exactly where their stops are. And the easiest way to earn a buck is to sell above the top of the range where I know I've got those breakout pullback traders have all their stop losses. This is a breakout, right? It's basically a failure pattern. You're waiting for that breakout, you're waiting for that pullback, and you're selling literally right into those stop losses. Now, what if we don't, you know, what, what if there's no pit stop? What if it just runs higher here? If it just runs higher, now that momentum is going to be way too strong. So now what you want to do is, is use the nested. The one try off the moving average, pull back two tries. Once you've got those, those bulls now showing two attempts, okay? And you could say right here, right? Strong move down, one try for the bears, two try for the bears, then up, okay? See how everybody piles on afterwards? So if we go up, Again, without going sideways here, we know where they're trying to go. They're trying to get that pendulum target on the other side of the range right now. Wait now for that pullback. Let the buyers try once, lower low, try twice, and then we can get that sell now going back down into that trading range. That's the trick. It's all about that short-term momentum. Now, what would a breakout look like on this? How would we confidently call this a breakout market? Well, there's a very simple pattern I use called a one, two, three breakout. I know, pretty clever, huh? Yeah, one, two, three breakout. Wait till you see how clever I really am. One, strong move up. Two, pull back to the moving average. And three is that break off the moving average. I told you, very clever, right? One, two, three. One, strong move up. Two, pull back to a rising moving average. Three, strong move off the moving average. Okay, that's what you really want to wait for to qualify a breakout. Because as you can see, just getting a strong move down is not enough to guarantee it's a breakout. Okay, those fail all the time. So if we see it really strong move up here, again, I'm not gonna sell it until I see one, two, and then in, but I'm also not gonna try to buy that pullback either. It's not a very reliable trade yet. Yet, if they do up, back, and go, now what I'll do is, again, one, two, three, breakout, mark that high, mark that trend line high, Find your channel. This would be a, what I call a hidden channel there, and you can buy a pullback 
off the low of that channel. That same pattern, by the way, goes for the bear side. One, two, three, mark up the low, draw the trend line low, find the high, and we're selling off that, right, off that, again, hidden channel high. One, two, three, breakout into hidden channel pullback. Where are the buyers trying to go? Oh, that's easy. The buyers are trying to go back up that 54, 69. How about the sellers? Sellers want to go back down to that big round number around 52. They get a bunch of, right, get a bunch of bottoms down here around that 52. So sellers want to go to 52. Buyers want to go back to almost 55. Let's say 55 over there. Now we're just waiting to get the heck out of this trading range. Buy low, sell high, avoid the middle. And again, we've talked about those two different types of range bound patterns, a failure pattern and a nested failure. Now you might be scratching your head right now saying, okay, what's the difference again? How do you know which pattern to use and where? Well, I'll make it easier on you. I'll put a link in the upper right hand corner for you to register for our free trading classes. Inside the free class, you'll learn more about our three step strategy, the same strategy we use every morning at the opening bell in the trade room. And of course, most importantly, you'll learn about our four favorite entry setups, a failure pattern being one of them. So make sure you grab that link in the upper right hand corner. Not to worry, I'll wait for you. Pause the video if you want. Grab that link, get registered. Don't forget, don't forget, when you register, I'm going to email you access to the course. So make sure you follow all the instructions and then check your spam folder. Sometimes those welcome emails get stuck in your spam. If you're on the website right now, on the blog at Sideways Markets, there's a big red button right below the video tonight on the blog. So grab that button there below as well. So you can register in the description, grab that link in the upper right hand corner, or grab that big button right below the video tonight on the trading blog. In the meantime, we got a good plan here for oil. Now we just need to wait and see what we get next. Let's keep moving. S&P now coming up next. What do we know about the S&P? S&P is almost the exact opposite as we have for crude oil, right? Oil is a range bound market. S&P is the exact opposite of a range bound market. Range bound markets are balanced and sideways. Trending markets are, right, they're on a mission to accomplish something. They're trying to get somewhere. Now it looks to me like this S&P might be where they wanted to get to. I mean, after all, look where they are. They're running right into what really is seen as a major high above that big round number. So this is no joke. We are definitely, we are definitely knocking on the door of where you would expect there to be a hesitancy for buyers. I would expect buyers are not going to want to buy into this area. Most importantly, though, I would expect a lot of buyers to be taking profit in this area as well. Now, can they go higher than this, right? Yeah, they definitely can. There's a measured move waiting overhead. You'll notice we've got one leg, two legs, and three legs. So I would imagine, at least in the medium term, that's probably where these buyers are trying to go. The problem is, uh, I don't know about you, but I don't really feel comfortable buying into this major high. So we know we're bullish. There's no doubt about that. But I think we're a little bit too late to the party. I think the snacks are all running out. The beer is getting warm. This party's getting a little bit late. You know, we want to be buying low, not buying high. And right now, you can definitely see this market's getting a little bit frothy, if I can continue with that metaphor for the, for the, for the beer getting warm. The bottom line, though, is Right? I'll keep the metaphors to a minimum here for you. But the bottom line is we know we're bullish. We're just not in a great spot here to be a buyer. So what I want to do, I want to find some levels of support. Right, Find some support levels. Now what I'll do is I'll draw that trend line across. I'll bring it down below. And boy, does that give me a nice level of support there. That's one level of support I really want to use for tomorrow. Another level of support, I don't think they get much better than that level right there. What is that? 94 half, bounce, 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 bounce. I don't think they get much better than that 94 half, and that's going to create our battle zone. So we know we've got a couple levels of support now that we can look forward to using here. Okay, what's the plan though? This is, this is a lot very similar to what we said on oil. Remember on oil, how oil was all about the momentum in the market at that time? Let's zoom in. 
We know we've got resistance, but we know we've got space to go if we can get through it. How do we buy a pullback here first? What's a pullback look like? Well, first of all, a pullback to the low of that channel will not be a very steep pullback. So what I can look for is your classic failure. Again, imagine now we pull back to the low of that channel. Imagine now the moving average comes over. Sellers now who think this is now a bear market, they're on much faster time frames. They can't see the big picture. They think this market's reversed now. And once I see those bears selling off the moving average, now I know exactly where their pain is, right? Now we know... Now we know exactly where their stops are. Now we know where those counter trend sellers start feeling pain, where they start waving the white flag, if you will. Now there's that metaphor again. I'm going to now look to be a buyer right into where that pain is. I want to buy right into those stops. And if I get lucky, I can also grab that pullback as well, right? I can grab that pullback as well. So we got a failure pattern into that pullback pattern and then, of course, at that point, the retest the high is the target. Leave the runner up to the measured move. Relatively easy idea there, okay? I won't look for that shallow pullback. Try to get that moving average coming over. Get those sellers trying to sell off of it. Now you know where their stops are, buying into stops. And then don't forget that pullback pattern, what I call a failure into pullback combination. Now, what if we get a deeper pullback, though? Like I said earlier, that 94 half area is just screaming support here. So what if it really pulls back? Well, if it really pulls back that far, what you may end up getting is something like this, a two-legged pullback, one and two. In that case, draw the trend line over it and we'll use that trend line as a key level of support. We call these two LPs, right? Two LPs, two-legged pullback pattern, okay? Because of the one leg, and two leg, then you draw the trend line coming there over, right? That's the idea behind them. Two-legged pullback. Or if we just slice lower, now what happens? That momentum's pretty strong now, isn't it? So now in order for me to be a buyer now, I've got to give those bears one try, higher high, two try, then we know where their stops are. And now I can be a buyer, failure into pullback. And again, where's my target? Again, we're buying into stops. We're buying the pullback to the moving average. Where's my target? Back up to retest the high. Leave a runner. Oh, yeah. Measured move sounds like a good one. So those are some easy setups here as we pull back. Now, we're right up into that resistance up here. What if we go sideways? Sideways ranges, as we mentioned on the oil market, is, a, is very easy. Uh, if the market starts going sideways with double tops and double bottoms, we know this becomes a range. Moving average will flatten out. You know what I mean, right? So it's going sideways on that chart. Remember, once you know where that range is, then you can plot your range expansion levels. Remember, we did this on oil. Remember on oil, how oil had that buy zone below and the sell zone above? Same thing. Once I know my range looks like, then I can start to anticipate where my support levels are going to be below. Now, I'm going to use that two-try failure pattern, one try for the bears, two try for the bears, and back up we go from there. I call it a two-try failure pattern when, it, when it's a range-bound scenario just because it helps, to, it helps you visualize those two separate tries, one try and two try. If you focus on buying into those two-try failures underneath this range, okay, 80, 85, 90% of the time, you'll be on the right side of that market. Okay, what you don't want to do though is, is try buying above the range, okay? Stay away from buying high, buying nice and low. But you know, make no mistake about it, if the market starts going sideways here, that is a very bullish clue. It's not a bearish clue. If the buyers can hold this market and pin it right to the high, that means whoever's getting out of their positions, the buyers are, are mopping them right up again like a wet sponge. So what you want to do is you want to wait for it to pull back. That will get the moving average coming over. Let those sellers, let them try to sell off it. For all we know, they'll break it down. Okay, for all we know, it'll be a one, two, three breakout. Okay, nothing wrong with that. One, two, three breakout. If they go sideways and we get a one, two, three, and they jump off of that moving average, that's a breakout. 
I'm not going to try to predict that breakout, though. Once I see it, then I'll mark up that new low, find my new hidden channel, and now I can be a seller off that hidden channel. When you get a nice one, two, three breakout, that sell off the top of that hidden channel is almost a guarantee. Okay, I'll just give you a hint though, you gotta wait for the breakout. It's not gonna pay very well. It's not a very reliable long-term strategy to be, uh, what's the word here? Trying to predict these breakouts, right? Trying to predict that breakdown. I don't care what indicators you have in your chart, okay? Predicting breakouts are really, really tricky. What I like to do is, I like to wait for that range to develop, right? Don't even mess around with the range. Wait for that breakdown. Get that moving average coming over. Let those sellers commit to it. Then you know exactly where their pain is. It's a much easier trade that way. And I know, I know, you're going to sacrifice a little bit of profit to dramatically increase your odds of success, right? Rather than trying to predict breakouts, wait for the breakout, or wait for the breakout failure. You know, what's more important to you? Would you trade a little bit of profit to have a much higher winning percentage, right? Would you, would you, would you be happy with a little bit less profit each week, but a whole lot more reliability, no more white knuckled, grinding your teeth, right? Nervous trading. I don't know about you, but I would. I definitely would. I want low stress. I want easy does it. I want easy patterns. I don't want to be white knuckled and stressed out while I'm trading. And that's what you have to do when you're trading breakouts. So range bound market, heading sideways, buying low with that two try failure pattern. Now, what if we go higher here? If we go higher, there really is a couple things you want to think of. First of all, if we go higher, not much changes. We're still trying to get that pullback. We're still trying to get that chance to buy into those seller failures and buy that pullback. Not a lot changes if we, if we keep going higher here. I still want to get underneath the moving average, right? I still want to get those bears to try to sell off the moving average so I can buy that pullback. I still want to look for those patterns. One pattern, though, you might want to think about if the market really jumps and we go into Asia, is that two try breakout pattern. A strong move up, it's a one, it's a two, and a trap low for a buy. Now, this pattern requires a very strong break higher. Okay, gotta be a very strong break higher. Then let those bears try once, let them try twice, and because you've got that measured move right overhead, you want to use that trap entry. Remember, trap entries are by far going to be the most reliable when you're running out of open space overhead. Okay, now trap patterns are not the most common, but they're extremely powerful. So you definitely want to learn how to look for traps, what traps are, and you know, now that I think about it, you can learn all about those trap patterns inside that free course that I linked up in the description of this video. Again, we know what a reversal looks like. One, two, three, reversal. One, strong move down. Two, pull back to the moving average. Three, strong move off. We know what a one, two, three, reversal looks like. We know the bears want to go back down to retest the low. We know these bulls want to get up to that measured move. If they get through that measured move, 30, 22, Got a lot of earnings out before the market opens and after the close today. 30.22, that's going to be the big home run target here this week for those buyers. We'll see. I wouldn't go holding your breath just yet, right? We'll see here. We're at a major top right now. Buying pullbacks, watching out for a range, and watch out. Don't buy right into that measured move. Let's keep going. How about some NASDAQ? Now, NASDAQ is going to be very similar here to the S&P. What, what, uh, what do we know about the NASDAQ right now? We know we're bullish. That's for sure. No doubt about that. Very strong, strong move up. Anytime I see a strong move like that, anytime we see a strong move like that, what do we know? We're going to probably get another leg. We're just waiting on that pullback. Now, on the S&P, the S&P, we were right into some resistance here. We don't have that as bad, do we? Yeah, see, we don't, right? The big top is way up here on the, on the NASDAQ, just before that 8,000. If you were to bring that next level down, though, you know, you could say that's a top, but honestly, that, it's not a top. 
It really isn't. Uh, the big top is this one up around that 79, 84. So I definitely would not put as much emphasis on this 79, 56 level that I would like we have in the S&P right now. The S&P, that, that is a big top. Okay, we're not quite there. The next top here on the NASDAQ is that 79, 89 and change up there. So we've got some room to go. We've got definitely some room to stretch our legs here on this NASDAQ, but a lot like the S&P, you know, we've got that one, two, three, we've got that measured move waiting there overhead. So that's definitely something that we want to be just aware of as we go higher, because that's going to tell us to use those trap patterns. So again, I know we're bullish. We're trying to find some support levels here. I'm marking up that high, bringing it down to these lows. And you'll notice there's a couple different variations of this channel that you could be using here. Do we get a shallow pullback? Do we get a deep pullback? A lot of this is very similar to the S&P. We've got a great reversal line there right around that 79.10 area. So definitely excited about getting my hands dirty on a pullback. I want to buy a pullback here. Do we get a relatively shallow pullback? You know, do we get that relatively shallow pullback? Moving average comes over. I can look for those sellers to sell off the moving average. Then I know where their pain is. I can buy into those stops. I can wait to buy the pullback. I always recommend get in on the failure. And if you can, get that one-to-one -one first target off the table there and then add, right, fill the boat on that pullback. We'll talk more about the specifics of that though in that course that I mentioned linked up in the upper right hand corner. That's gonna be your typical failure into pullback combination. But if we really get a deep dive, remember if it really dives deep here into some of this area down here now, now that momentum now needs to be taken seriously one try for the Bears, two try for the Bears, and then we can go up from there. This is a very similar so we talk about on oil, and it's the exact same thing as we talked about on the S&P. A lot of this has to do with how deep is that pullback. And again, these nested patterns, these nested patterns are very, very common when you get those really deep, deep moves. And we get a lot of examples of those inside of our free trading classes. As we go higher here, right, as we go higher, well, first of all, let's, let's not forget, what if it goes sideways? If we start seeing the market go sideways here, what's the plan? Find that range first, find the range expansion support, use that one try, separation, two try, right? Two separate tries. Again, all it really is, is just a move lower. The bears try to sell off the pullback. They're thinking this market now is reversing, right? It ain't reversing yet though, that's the thing, right? I, I realize this may keep going, but it's not a reliable sell area there much more reliable to wait for the sellers to try and sell and then just simply making sure you're getting in underneath the range. Remember, you don't want to trade inside the range. Uh, it's so much easier said than done, believe me, right? But range bound markets buy low, sell high, avoid the range middle. So as long as I can get that entry before I get back into that range, I'm a happy camper, okay? And again, if we go higher here, we've got that measured move overhead. So think about a strong move up, one, two, trap and go. Might not have enough room on that. Might not have enough space. Uh, and also to think about this too, if we get a run up to that measured move, oftentimes measured moves will give you a sideways range up here. One try, two try, we know where stops are and we're buying into stops there. Or it may run up, it may pull back, Moving average comes over, you know, profit taking off the high, we get that pullback, bears come in selling off the moving average, you know what I mean, right? And we'll look to buy it right back up again. The bottom line is we know we have a really strong move right now. And anytime you see a strong move in one direction, you're going to probably see buyers waiting on that pullback. Okay, so once we have that move up, just wait for that pullback, get underneath the moving average. That's where you'll get the best risk reward ratio. I like to get underneath the moving average because I can catch those counter trend traders now trying to reverse that trend. And when they try to reverse the trend, you can see it, right? Below well, the moving average, below the moving average, you're looking for that failure back up, that failure back up underneath 
that moving average. So don't shy away from it. If it gets the measured move, just wait for the pullback. If it goes sideways, wait for the pullback. You can see there's a, a kind of a common denominator here, right? Wait to buy low. Wait to buy at a key level of support. And if they do get clobbered and it runs lower, okay, don't forget it's a, it's a nested one, two back up. Or if they hold it and run, remember, they got to really jump off that moving average. Then you know it's a bear market. Mark that low, and I know, I know, we all want to get in during that big move down, but it's very difficult to predict it. Much better off now marking up that channel and selling off that channel. And again, like I always say, okay, wouldn't you rather trade some peace of mind? Wouldn't you pay a little bit of profit out of your account for a lot more confidence, a lot less stress on your trading? I know I would. The lower stress trading strategy is always my favorite, and I think you would probably agree if you're doing it every day with me in the trade room. Target back down to those lows there, right, on the NASDAQ. As we go higher here again, we really want to try to stay out of trouble here. Watch that sideways range. Watch this move to pull back, one try, two try, and up from there. Nice, easy chart there, right, on the NASDAQ. We really just have to be careful. We don't want to chase after it as it goes higher, and of course, you want to wait for that pullback. Last but not least here, over on the gold, the yellow metal here tonight, we've got a lot of, of stuff on this chart right now. First of all, what do we know first here? We know there is an overall bearish tone to it here. Uh, there definitely is. If not, if not just for this last bit today, right? We, we definitely know there was a very strong bear move down. So right off the bat, we know if we're going to buy this thing, we've got to wait for that one, that two, that nested failure going back up. I don't want to get ahead of myself though. What else do we know? A range. That range from last Friday bled into today. What does the range tell me to do? Range tells me to buy low. Range tells me to sell high. Range tells me stay out of the middle, Joe. Stay out of that middle. Now, this is kind of a weird looking range, isn't it? It's a very small, little narrow little guy or gal, right? Apparently, he's been missing some meals, doing his cardio, a little keto maybe, right? It's a skinny guy or gal, right? So we know that anytime we have a, a very narrow trading range, we know we want to use multiple buy zones. See what I'm doing here? Stacking them up. So what you want to think about is a regular size range will use, you know, two deviations. A narrow, narrow range, I'm going three deviations wide here. Okay, and you'll notice that's exactly where we are right now. Now, why does it work like that? Why does a narrow range determine how wide you want to use those breakouts? It all has to do with risk-reward ratio. Okay, if I try to buy too close to that range, I'm going to have to take a full-size risk and only get a small reward. But if I can buy way down here, yeah, see, now I can take a normal size risk, but I can also get an, an, a, a, an oversized reward. So when it comes to a range, you know, this is, this, is, this is not very common. This is kind of a weird looking range here. But hey, every once in a while, you're gonna get these, a really narrow range, triple that range expansion up. And not to worry, guys, there's, there's a lot to learn when it comes to range bound markets, I get that. So make sure you grab that free course I mentioned earlier. That will walk you through ranges. And of course, we'll do this together. I think, you know, I think when it comes to ranges, ranges by definition are very chaotic because the market's kind of clueless, right? You know, ranges by definition are going to be a little more chaotic because there's no real direction. There's no real, you know, firm control. So ranges are definitely one of those markets where practice makes perfect. Coming in and doing it with me every morning in the trade room, I think will really make for a big improvement there. So bottom line is we know we're trying to use those three deviations. I want to go back into that range, right? I want to go back into that range. That's the second thing we know. What else do we know? We also know get a little measured move. Now, measured moves in range-bound markets are not necessary, but they definitely don't hurt in this situation. Measured moves sitting right there. Now, remember, when we get a strong move down like this, okay, my measured, me measured moves right there, strong move down, remember, measured moves, we almost always go double up, okay? Remember, this knife cuts both ways. Remember back in the NASDAQ? On the NASDAQ, we had that measured move up top here, right? Up pull back, failure, and retest. Remember that from the NASDAQ chart? That applies, the same idea applies to a measured move below. 
Strom moved down, pull back, failure, and down from there. That same, right, the same thing applies to a bear market too. So as we go lower here, just because we get that measured move does not mean we're now guaranteed to go higher. That's a very strong bear momentum move down. So knowing that, we have to expect the potential for another leg before we get that run going higher. Okay, Keep that in the back of your mind. Which brings me to really the fourth big clue here, and that is, and that, or I guess the, one of the clues, and that is that spike in channel. Okay, the spike in channel, in my opinion, really is the big clue. We know it's a range. We know the market will probably go back up to that 1494, 1495 area. But what does the spike in channel tell us to do? Spike in channels, strong move down, pull back, lower low, draw that channel out. First pullback's pretty reliable, but afterwards, what happens? Deep pullback. Mark the first pullback, the base of that channel. What is that? That becomes our sell zone. I'm just, I'm just teaching the same thing we always talk about on a spike in channel. Okay, so the moral of the story is, what I want you to take away from this is, is that we have a bear spike in channel right now. That bear spike in channel, think about where sellers are going to be trying to sell. Right at the base of that channel. So if you were to zoom in now on this chart, okay, here's now, let's make it a little bit easier here. Mark up that low, mark up that high now, where's my channel? Or sorry, where's my sell zone? Mark up the first pullback, the base, the channel, it's right there. So now I have to assume we're gonna get some sellers trying to sell there, okay? Very, very important clue, okay? Last bit of this, you can see that channel Okay, this is one of those channels that you have to trade like a range. It's almost a flat channel. You know, if you were to, if you were to give this channel a little bit of a nudge, a little bit higher there, this would be a flat channel, right? So this is a channel, but it's basically one big range, right? Think of like one big range. Anytime you see a flat, you know, flat channel, right? Uh, you know, think of the, the 45 degree angle. Here's a 45 degree angle. That's gonna be your most reliable channels. 45 degree angles, those are the ones you want to really, you really want to get aggressive with. When I have a channel though that is more, you know, 30 degrees or so, now you can buy low, you can sell high. It's basically a range with a, just a slight bear bias to it. But obviously, buyers can make money buying off that low, the sellers can sell it back down. So that is what we call a two sided market. Make sense? When the, when the, when the channel is wide and flat, buyers and sellers can make money on both sides, can't they? If that channel is steep though, again, the 45 degree angle, it's no longer a two-sided market anymore, is it? No, you can't make any money in that type of market as a buyer, can you? You can't. Very little bit of profit there for buyers. That's a one-sided market. So when I see, and again, this just kind of leads to credibility of this channel, okay? Yes, it is a bear channel, but it's so flat it's so wide that you could easily think how buyers can make an easy profit buying off that low. So put them all together. We know we have an overall bear momentum, but we know we have that range. We're sitting right at a measured move. We know we're sitting at three deviations, as I call it, outside of that trading range. This thing's gonna probably wanna go back into that range. But wait, there's a lot of bearishness in this market right now, specifically, with this spike in channel. That spike in channel tells me, if I can borrow this rectangle here real quickly, this spike in channel tells me now that this area right up in there, again, we got the bears in, pretty much in control right now, but we wanna go back into that range. What are some options to be a buyer on this? There's really one basic pattern I'm looking for right now, and that is a nested failure. I wanna see one, I want to see two. I want to see sellers. I want to see at least some bears coming in inside that sell zone. Okay? I can't just blindly buy unless I'm doing it after two tries here. Now, a couple options on this. We know where stops are, right? Stops will be right above that high now, and that obviously is where you can now get in buying into. Okay, and what I would do is is look for that nice strong signal candle. Once I get that signal candle, 
closing above the moving average, right? You can get in there early as you go back up into that trading range, which reminds me, this could also be a two-legged pullback pattern as well, right? So imagine now we see one try for the bears. We still have not cleared inside that sell zone. We see two tries for the bears. Now we've got one. We've got two. We got the nested, but now what do we call that? A two-legged pullback, right? Two-legged pullback. That will be a little bit, that'd be a little more aggressive, but once you get that nice strong signal, make sure it closed above the moving average, bingo back up into that range right now, okay? Those are two kind of small variations of the same basic pattern. The moral of the story though is, let them try once, let them try twice, and then let her rip, okay? Now, what if we don't? What if we just run back into the range here? Okay, there are really two options here. One option is gonna be that two try breakout pattern. Strong move up, one try for the bears, two try for the bears, trap low. Not a bad pattern, but you gotta be, it's, it's gotta be an aggressive move. This move higher here needs to have some good pace to it, right? It's gonna be a real strong push up. Let the buyers, right? Let the buyers take profit. The bears try twice, and we're buying that trap low on the way back up into that trading range. Another thing to look for is, would be a one, two, three. You got it, mark up that high, mark up that low, and get that, this will be a tough one. This will be kind of a thread the needle. I doubt we're gonna get that one. I doubt we'll get that one. But if we do, awesome pattern. Again, you're still kind of piggybacking the one try, two try, but in this case, that momentum takes it much higher. Okay, I would imagine we're gonna either get that one, that two, and that buy, or we'll see that jump up, one, two, trap low. Just remember, if it runs back up into that trading range, stay out of that range. One try, two try, same idea as we, as we talked before. If we end up back in that range, stay away from that range. Okay, then what? Failure pattern, one try for the bears. Moving average comes over, two try for the bears. Now we know where pain is. Now we know where stops are, and we're buying the way back up. Okay, or we go back into that range. We chop around for a while. One try for the bulls, two try for the bulls, right? The knife cuts both ways. Then we sell it back down again. So buying low, selling high, avoiding that middle. How about a breakout? Breakout, we got a strong move down already. If we can hold the pullback and run here, this market will be bearish. We'll look for that, right? Look for that run, draw that trend line, mark up my sweet spot and look to be a seller off that hidden channel. Okay, so we already get a strong move down. We got step one. We just need a pullback for two and then a strong move off. Remember, if you want to qualify a breakout, it's all about that strength, right? It's all about that strength. And I realize we've got a, it's a trade-off, right? It's a trade-off. Do you want a higher winning percentage or do you want to try to get more profit? In the long run, I would trade my winning percentage for a dollar amount any day of the week. I want low stress. I want high confidence. I want reliable, reliable, reliable. I want a couple good, reliable setups every day to grow the account like a weed. And don't forget, guys, every morning, Monday through Friday, we do all this together. You know, being, in, being a new trader is pretty difficult. There's a lot to learn. There's emotions going on upstairs, money on the line. And the markets are always a little bit different, right? It can be a little bit challenging when you're brand new. That's why I invite everybody else to come do it with me every morning in our trade room. Getting registered as a member and joining me tomorrow morning is actually really, really easy. If you're on YouTube right now, I'll put all the links in the description of the YouTube video. So grab the description of the YouTube video. There'll be a link right there to get registered. Okay, also too, don't forget, if you're on the website right now, I'll put a big button to register right below the video tonight if you're on the website right now. So if you're on the blog, right, there'll be a, there'll be a big bread button below you here. And of course, if you're on YouTube here, grab that link in the description. If you're on the website, don't forget, it's the advanced course you're looking for. 
The advanced course includes all access to everything that we do. You can learn more about membership on our website. And don't be afraid to call me too. I'm always here, right? You can always use that toll-free phone number. You can always use that live support tool right below, right, right below my ugly mug here tonight. So don't be afraid to call the office, use that live support tool. And also don't forget, if membership is not quite right for you right now, not to worry. Make sure though you grab that free trading course as part of our free trial. That way, at least you can follow along with me during our newsletter. Come get a free pass. Come join me as a guest in our trade room. You'll love the free trial. You'll love the free course. And as always, I always enjoy being here with you guys and gals every evening on this video. So get registered. Again, check out the description of the YouTube video or that big button below the video tonight on the blog. Call me. Send me an email if you guys have any questions. And uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Always appreciate your valuable time. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock clock Eastern time with all the members. If not, we'll come back and do it again tomorrow night. Same time, same place on the next edition of this nightly newsletter. As always, my name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will you? And be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.